Hey everyone and welcome to another Planet Zoo tutorial. Today we are going to look at the traversable area and the habitat maneuvering or the navigation in general. How the animals navigate through their habitat and what is very important to look at. And actually this is going to be a very in-depth video. So I hope you are going to enjoy this. But before we start with the actual tutorial, I'm going to show you why I'm doing this and what is the result of all my investigation I have done in the past couple of weeks. In fact, to bring this tutorial to you and there went a lot of work and research into it so let's get started with looking at what the final result of this research was all right so we are here in my geodesic dome which is uh, featuring a, a capuchin monkey habitat now this habitat is very special because it has a lot of animals in there and therefore as you can see i'm just opening the overview over here a lot of animals that need to traverse through the habitat now i achieved that the animals basically use every single space and every single square meter of the habitat available as you can see i'm just following this dude over here how uh, he's running all across the habitat and we can just go into the habitat and you can basically see that the animals are using every single space in the habitat um, as it is supposed to be and uh, the cool bit about this is I managed to do this and achieve this by really investigating how the animals behave in the game and what you can do to make them not only go everywhere but also to force them to be in a constant movement so that your guests also have a better view um, it is especially also relevant for your franchise zoos and definitely also relevant for your habitat design in general now, as you've seen this, this is the final result and I'm going to actually give you a dedicated plan of this habitat which I have made in uh, Photoshop, uh, a very <laughs> very basic version, but it is really helping to understand uh, what goes into it and how you can improve your skills in building habitats. But to not uh, bore you anymore, let's just jump into the actual tutorial. All right, part one of the tutorial has to do with the traversable area and the navigation in general, just to understand the basics. Now, in Planet Zoo, there are three different types of navigation. We have the land navigatable area, we have the navigatable swimming area, and we have the climbing, which the elephant, which I've uh, kind of selected over here, does not have but there are animals and we come to this later that require also climbing and climbing to be honest is a little bit different from the other two now to talk about navigatable land and water area or swimming area it is pretty simple the game calculates the available surface in a 2d space in terms of the square meters available now as we click now on this elephant we can open by pressing h the overview the heat map for the traversal area all that you can see in blue over here is traversable including the water pond in the middle now that said i can show you what happens if i click on this little dude over here which is our western chimpanzee this is a monkey and you can see that this one does not have any swimming requirement but it has some climbing navigatable area okay so if i press h again you can see the water is excluded but in comparison to our friend the elephant this chimpanzee is also able to go on top of this mountain while clicking on our elephant you can see it's left out so Let's talk about why this is the case. Now, the game acts like really calculating the surface of the animals or like the surface of your habitat, which is navigatable. And there are two different things that you need to keep in mind. Number one is the different angle of the surface that your animals can navigate on. As you can see in this habitat, I made these very wonderful three hills in here. And the hills have a different incline. Now, inclines are very important because this is definitely one of the main reasons why an animal can go somewhere or not. Some animals can go steeper, some other animals do just need a very subtle incline in order to make sure that they can still traverse it. Our elephant is one of the extreme, um, uh, extreme examples of an animal that has a very, very subtle incline, while, for example, the lion um, can traverse some uh, crazy inclines. As you can see over here, it can go even higher than our friend the chimp oh well actually it's the same as the chimpanzee though but anyways you can see that there is a huge difference when it comes to water water is basically pretty simple like water is only calculated by the surface space so many people also commented lately that it is also kind of calculated by the depth of the pool which i found not to be true as i can show you our elephant over here has now 78 square meters of space now what i'm going to do now live for you to show is i'm going to get rid of the water and we're just going to make this thing deeper, okay? We're not going to make this bigger. We're just going to make this thing deeper. Let me just go here and make sure that I only make this way, 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 way deeper. Just like make sure that this is a way deep thing. 
and then just we put in the water again it's recalculating the water area and there we go 78 square meters so basically nothing really changed here and um, in order to make your swimmable area a bit bigger you can actually go with a very shallow water which I'm gonna talk about later is a very easy thing uh, to make your habitats work so let me just show you this one okay that was not deep enough but we just go a bit more deep and then we just gonna make oops that was the wrong thing I wanted to keep the foundation just do it like that and then just oh well there's an animal in here let me just kind of move this little dude over here move it away there you go terrain put the water in and you can see the elephant where's our friend the elephant it's in the back here so the elephant now has a lot more navigatable area in the water even though it's not even deep enough for it to swim it's still enough water so they only calculate the surface of the water it's nothing nothing more nothing less okay now this is just the basic understanding of the navigatable area one thing though, I just wanted to quickly mention, this, these are two things I made for you guys. I'm going to provide this um, to the workshop after this episode, with this episode. You can get them from the workshop and these things are very handy. I'm going to explain them now. Alright, so why did I make these two tools? Well, it's basically very simple. The animals, as I started earlier, have a different incline they can traverse. And in order to measure how much of an incline you can do, you have to basically test this with the terrain available. As I already showed you, our elephant can traverse this area over here, but it can not traverse down here. So you can see this basically is the steepest that uh, the animal can go. Now what you can do now is you can basically grab the thing, take this over here and just slide that in until you have the steepest thing available. And that is in my case, it would be pretty much, let's see if we go even steeper. I think that is the angle we go, okay? So this is the yellow angle over here, the highest yellow angle. And I started to give you a hint. This is 45 degrees, we have steps of four. So that means we have like 45, 40, 35, 30 degrees. So that means the elephant seems to be able to navigate 30 degrees. You can actually test this if you want with this little measurement thing I gave you. So basically what you can do, okay, I told you 30 degrees does work. So what you would do is just plop this thing out, okay, let's build a ramp for the elephant and let's see if the elephant can use it. So therefore we're just going to use these two things. I'm gonna bring this in here. We know that it could not go onto this one and we can just tr test this by putting that in. Here we go, just a little bit more over this side, awesome. So if our measurement was correct, this should now work. Let's hit play again and see what the elephant does. It's recalculating. It's not quite working though. Um, this could also be, like the reason behind this could also be that the ramp is um, not connecting to the traversable area. But we can also test if maybe you need to, sometimes it's a bit finicky. I'm not gonna lie, it's, there's no, no perfect uh, example for this because you have to test. But this thing really gives you an idea. Maybe it is just 25 degrees. Now let's uh, use this one again and to see if that's the angle the animal will use and kind of can navigate. So let's just plop this in again to connect these two areas and hope that our animal is going to do this. Let's do it that way. And test again, press play and let it recalculate the navigatable area. It still cannot do it, but again, it can also be that it's not wide enough because our animals also have like a very crazy demand when it comes to width. And this is the actual the other tool you guys need to understand. Now let's see, and boom, there we go, that works. Now this was the perfect segue. Actually, I forced this to be happening because there is also one more thing to consider. So number two, you need to understand that the animal has a certain corridor in which it can move. And this means around every animal, and this is what we're going to show you next, has a dedicated radius in which it's gonna move. And I'm going to show you how you can make this really usable in terms of how you build your habitat. All right, here we go. So the next step is the navigatable area in terms of the radius it needs to traverse through kind of little um, bottlenecks and stuff. Now every animal has a different size and even in the species, within the species you have different size. So this ele elephant is quite small, it only has 42% uh, percent of its size, but you can still see the animal is not able to go everywhere. Let me just show you what I mean. So you can see even in this gap in between those two things it cannot go through and even between those things it cannot pass through. Now there's a reason for this and this is how the game actually calculates the animal how it traverses. So on every single area in the park or in the zoo or in the 
habitat itself, the elephant needs to be able to rotate around itself in order to prevent anything weird happening. Now, I made this little ruler for you to understand how much of a space you need. So it's pretty simple to use. Now, let me just quickly um, select all of this and exclude these two pieces over here. I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna move this over to this side. As soon as I've moved this over, you created the first little gap over here. And this gap really should help you to understand if the animal can go through or not. Now, first of all, you can see, nope, it's not gonna work, but you have already a little hint that there is a gap opening. That means there's not that much space needed. In order to make sure that you have a very detailed um, alignment on how much uh, kind of space you need, I made kind of uh, sure that you know how much space. So these wall pieces are four by four meters, while this is one meter and this one is 0 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters. Now, what we're going to do, we're just trying to get closer now to the opening area. What's happening now is we are just going to, first of all, just take all of that, move it over so you do have it in a nice space. And then just we are going to try to move ourselves closely to what the animal needs. So I will I will just take this uh, one meter thing and put it in twice so that we go and have a six meter opening because obviously this is like four, meter, uh, four meters each of a gap. So with eight meters of a gap minus two meters means this is gonna be six meters. So then we're gonna check if the animal can traverse, just select the animal again wait until it does and there is a gap opening um it's just very subtle so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna start with another meter though i think i think that might be too much so what i'm going to do next is i'm gonna select uh, five of these things which is uh, half a meter i'm just gonna move them over just connect them to here you don't have to be super precise it's gonna it's just important that you know how much that is okay then you can just play, press play again and let's have a look if it is okay and there's still a gap. Yes, there is in fact still a gap. Now you could go closer if you want, but I only, I always recommend to make sure that you are um, going close to it, but don't go too close. So, you know, you could do like, let's say 30, 30 centimeters again, just to make sure if that would still work. Let me just check. Okay, this is another 30 centimeters. There you go, let's see. And there is still a gap. Let's recall, no, it's gone, okay. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna go with this one. So we know it is 5.5 meters that is needed for the animals to be traversing. Okay, so 5.5 meters, keep that in mind. Now. I'm gonna show you now how you can create a little marker for you, which is very important because you will need this marker in the future quite a lot. Now, it's very simple though. What you're going to do is, and I'm gonna provide you the basic setup also in the blueprint, but you go into this build, and then you search for the mud pillar. The mud pillar is very important for this build. Now you're going to use the mud pillar and you're just going to drop it into the ground so it just touches the ground. There you go, this is what you do. Uh, wait, where is it gone? It's, it's gone, there you go. We're gonna put it here, okay? So this is the basic thing you need. And now what you need to do is you need to have this gap centered to this piece and it's quite easy 5.5 meters is like what you need so the middle of it is obviously 2.75 meters and um, it, since this is a bit tricky to do in the game I only uh, recommend to like you know go with a bit of a bigger gap so 5.6 meters you know that's a bit easier so you have um, 2.8 meters of the actual uh, thing you need to have in two areas. I'm, I'm gonna call about, uh, talk about this because it's the radius you need because you're gonna make a round-ish thing. I'm gonna show you how you do this. So it's very simple. Um, you just have to go and just take yourself these things here um, that you need to have like two meters and 60. So what you're gonna do is just copy one over here and then we just count one, two, and this is 60 because these are six pieces. Let's gonna check these, copy them over, and make sure to just slightly put them in the middle. You don't need to be super accurate. It's gonna be very easy later on. The one thing you need to do though is you need to move these things then down. Right, here we go. Just move them all to the ground. It's only important once. And then what you wanna do is you go to construction and you go to the art shapes. And what you're gonna do here is you are going to go and take yourself the biggest primitive circle. You're gonna pre press F because this is gonna center it to pieces. And you're gonna center it to the mud pillar down here. So that's what you do, okay? So you press F and there you go. Then you just select this one and hit Control X. And what you wanna do now is move it into a position that it is just touching the outside here. 
So there you go. This is all you need to do. There's not much more you need to do. What you can do now is just gonna select all of these pieces, get rid of them, select this and move it far away from your building piece because you don't need it anymore. All right, then you just copy it around. Make sure to always press uh, Z on your keyboard to make sure you rotate this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna select this and what you want to do is basically make sure that you delete all of the mud pillars down here that you don't need. Just leave one more in. Uh, you need one more mud pillar in the center. You're going to select all of them, deselect the mud pillar. And what you do now is hit Control X and then make sure you have the angle snap activated. Drag it up. Just make sure that you rotate it. There you go. Drag it all the way up so that it only touches this little ground here. Move it into the center. There you go. And what you need to do now is you just go and select the mud pillar again because you want to make sure to rotate it again once. There you go. This is what you did. Awesome. Very simple. Very easy. And this now is your marker. You can actually get rid of it or whatever, but whatever you need to do is now just deselect this from the group and you have your marker. This is your elephant marker and it is quite immense, I know, but this is unfortunately the size you have. You can just copy it that way and this is your marker you want to use all over the place in your habitat. Whenever you want to build something and you want to know if your animal is able to traverse, you're going to move this thing into it and you know if it works. And this is also the reason why some of the hard shelters need to have a huge opening so that the animals can traverse through. All right, next lesson is the heat map, or basically I'm calling it heat map. It is understanding how your animal navigates within the habitat. Therefore, we are going to have a look at the timber wolf over here, and I'm going to speed the whole process up now. I'm gonna speed up the whole habitat, and I'm going to paint where this animal is gonna move. And after I've done this, we're going to change a little bit about the habitat, and we're going to see what happens then. So at the moment, you can see there's nothing in the habitat except some water, some little hills and basically some food whenever a keeper is going to throw something in but there's nothing else in here no enrichment no food no water source except those two lakes over here and therefore we are also going to make sure that the lakes are gone for the moment because I don't want to have any trigger so this is what we need and now we are going to follow this dude a little bit along and I'm going to paint his heat map and then we're going to do a little change and I'm going to explain what we did and why we did this All right, so this is the heat map of our timber wolf, which kind of moved within the habitat, as you can see. I actually cut out when it actually had a little sleep here and quite long. Now, the first thing I learned, I was doing this many, many times, and I figured that there is not that big of a difference, and people were actually talking so much about the fact that you need to put down a lot of things so that the animal is going to traverse everywhere. And honestly, there is one specific thing you need to keep in mind. It takes a while until the animals start to explore the habitat. So the first, let's say in-game 10-ish minutes, the animal will not move that much. But after these 10-ish minutes and after the animal like slept for a few times, it really starts to understand that there is more to find. And the animal then will actually move a lot. And now we have the perfect example of what happens when a keeper drops down some food. This is the absolute overpowered movement control. The drink and food desire is the highest priority of any animal in the game and whenever there is food put into an enrichment item or into the actual habitat via kind of a food source, they will completely crush there. They will completely storm there and forget about anything else. No matter if they are hungry or not, they will go there. Now what do we learn from it? Well, in fact we learn that it takes time until the animal starts to use the habitat as you desire. So my big tip number one for you when it comes to this is make sure that your animals are within the habitat from the very, very beginning. Make sure that these things are really, 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 really in there and make sure that you hit play whenever you can to make sure that they can calculate what the uh, overall habitat is about. But obviously you can help a little bit with some enrichment items and stuff. So I'm going to make a little layout here for our animal and then I'm going to talk you through the layout and we're going to see what the heat map is going to look like then, okay? So I'll be back in a sec. 
All right, so here's the basic setup. You can see I deleted most of uh, our heat map we had already in, and I put down some enrichment items and also the normal items. I will also drop down on more keepers before I start the little uh, speed uh, kind of part. Here's the reason why I put some things down. You can see we have a water trough down here. We have a food tray. I also make sure that all the other animals are out now. We have some enrichment items all the way around in here and we have a bedding in the middle. At the moment our timber wolf is sleeping and we will actually bring him into the foreground in a few seconds. And um, well actually I'm just waiting until the keeper brings some food and this will be the point where I'm going to start this. And then I will talk you through what is very interesting about this and what you need to understand in order to make your habitat a bit better in the future but so far I don't want to talk too much about this let's have a look Alright, and I'm super happy that the game really gave me exactly the example I needed. And trust me, it's not really easy to make this because it always happens a little bit different. But this time it worked out the way it exactly should. Now you've seen the animal is actually moving quite a lot in its habitat. And it uh, also is kind of exploring some of the new areas. And even though I did take away some of the enrichment items in the meantime, it still got there to check if it's still there. Now one thing which is way more important than anything else is what happened down here. The moment the keeper brought the food in, you can see the animal just stormed there. And if you don't believe me, just skip back in the video and check it again. And then what happens after it eats, it goes straight to the food sauce, uh, the, the drink sauce. And many, many people thought, including me, that it is very clever to put the drink and food far apart from each other so that the animal needs to move between those two things and to not give this in the same area because then the animal has no need to go somewhere else. But I figured that this is totally wrong. I think it's kind of a time thing. This is my thought. The animal seems to have a priority of different needs and whatever you're gonna do with all the enrichment items, there is no basic rule that any enrichment item is more powerful than another. It really varies between animals. I know, for example, that the sprinkler is really, really, really good for all the primates and for the monkeys, but it's not that good for bigger animals, while bigger animals seem to really favor the ball and the card box. Um, and the big cats are also big fans of the card box too. And you always have to test which is the most favorite item and try to use that one in order to make sure that you, you make your animal will go there. But back to the food and drink sauce. Now, I think that these two are the highest priority. So they will always favor food and drink over everything else. Now, this is kind of a problem because food and drink is only so often requested. But if you make the animal fulfill these needs rather quickly, it has more time to go for the lesser interesting things, which are in fact the enrichment pieces. And this is my biggest, biggest tip for you. Make sure to have food and drink always very close to each other and then have the sleeping and the enrichment quite far away from this because that's how it works. The animal fulfills the basic need and then it goes and hunts for like some enrichment. If you have food and drink further away from each other, there is not that much time for the animal to discover the enrichment items because it is, has to travel between food and drink and then once it has traveled there is already the next food need in between and so it doesn't really move that much. So this is kind of helpful to understand because this way you understand how to build your habitat a lot better because the animal is really quick in fulfilling the basic needs and then it can go for the added needs and therefore you can make your animal discover the habitat way way more. So. That's been all about the traversable area in, in general. Now let's talk about climbing. This will be the next chapter before we then move on to some very interesting stuff about the climbing and about some, you know, how you can basically make sure that you don't have that much glitching. All right, so here we are with a little investigation of the climbing. So we talked about the basic traversable area, what you can do to make a, uh, animals traverse from one area to the other, but we haven't talked about climbing. And in this habitat, you can see there are a lot of animals that can use climbing, but there is a difference, okay? So I can show you the difference right here. Our friend, the snow leopard, has a dedicated need for space, but it does not really have a dedicated need for climbing or for water even though 
it can, and this is what you can see over here, traverse both. It can swim and it can only move across climbing. So why is that important? Well, if we, for example, hit one of our primates, you can see this one has a navigatable area on land. It hasn't got one on water, but it has got a climbing navigatable area. This is weird, isn't it? Because clearly this should definitely have, like the, the snow leopard should definitely have both, okay? So really, this is a bit of a weird thing because I really thought about this quite a long time. I was like, okay, what is the difference then? And it turns out that there is quite a significant difference in there. Now these animals that can climb but don't really have it as a, well let's say they don't have it as an enrichment need, they will only use climbing as a shortcut to get to a certain location of desire. So that means it will always favor the shortest route possible to get to one area. And this is constantly updated. So for example, you can see one of the snow leopards swimming down here. And this can have two reasons. Reason number one can be it is too hot and it needs to go to the water to cool itself. That's one of the desires, so that's why it would go in the water. Reason number two could be it needs to go to a certain location that is over here and then it will take the shortest possible way. And I'm not entirely sure if shortest means the quickest or the shortest in distance because I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna now go to Habitat and we're going to say Snow Leopard, whatever. And we're going to get a cardboard in and we are going to get uh, this, this, this thing as well. And we are also going to get in, what else can we get in? Like, let's say the rubbing pad, okay? So these two things go over here. And you will see now everyone is going to reset. That is awesome because that's what we need. And now we need to wait what happens with the animals. Like all the other animals, or not all of them, but most of them, also can do the traversing over here and as well as you can see now and it should hopefully do the trick and you can see that the animals are going to use different things to do so our friend the um, lion as well as this snow leopard over here they are using the bridges while the <laughs> while the little lemur is going to jump from one space to the other and this is a perfect example of what, what we are going to talk about next um, you can see that the snow leopard is moving over here and I'm really glad that they do the trick for me now because as you can see between those two there is a certain difference this distance over here for the one swimming is definitely shorter than that one over here but in overall it is quicker to go over this thing now the question is where did these animals go and I'm quite sure that this animal had a specific location to go I'm quite sure it goes to this enrichment item while this animal down here didn't really have one because it stopped here and it it seems it only wanted to get here and I think it's exactly that yeah we can see this now and this kind of brought me and I I tested this multiple times you can just trust me we don't need to look to this anymore because I tested this like a million times and it seems to be exactly this way if they have a specific need to get somewhere, it seems that they favor the shortest possible way to get there time-wise. Like, it doesn't really mean that they need this way in terms of how quick, uh, how long the distance is, but like how long it takes them to get there on a time scale. I'm not sure if that's correct, but this is what I figured most of the times to be to be correct. And now you can actually see this by putting down some food. You will see now that all the animals will get here and take the shortest possible way in terms of time. This animal will swim now because in fact if it would have taken this route over here it wouldn't be quicker since it's, it's not as quick uh, walking over here than it is now walking about this time. I'm not sure this one seems to be sleeping and therefore not coming down here. Um, but yeah, so this is very important to know and we're going to talk about this, what this is going to lead to in the next step. Now, as we have figured out that there is a difference between animals that use climbing as a navigation and there is a second thing we need to talk about next, animals that need navigation and enrichment by having climbing and we're going to talk about this now. All right, so we are in the next testing habitat and this one is very interesting and it will define what we're going to talk about at the end of this episode in terms of the overall climbing. And here we go, oh my God, the animal over here does already do what exactly what we needed. Um, so the chimpanzee is one of our, while the lion did already do something we need later, um, just keep in mind what happened with the lion over there, we're going to talk about this. But the chimpanzee just took this climbing frame over here, which is a bit weird, because this is definitely the longest possible route you can take, correct? I guess so, right. Before we 
you know, lose too much time over here. I'm gonna explain what this setup taught me. Now, there's a difference between animals that need to traverse a certain area and animals that do need it as a enrichment item. So here we go. The first thing to understand is that animals that have enrichment via climbing, you can see this by them having this navigatable climbing area icon activated over here, and animals that only use it to get somewhere is that these animals that have the enrichment need seem to favor longer climbing frames over shorter ones to get to a specific location. Now, the thing is that animals do seem to go somewhere in order to fulfill a need. However, with the animals that have the climbing need, they seem to fulfill this need during the time traveling to their location. So it's a bit of a problematic thing because they don't do climbing for the sake of climbing, which is the biggest issue. If they would do this, we don't need this video, but they don't. They only do climbing if they do get to a certain location. If you understand that animals that have a certain climbing need take a longer route and favor this longer route over a shorter one, you can build more intrigue and more crazy detailed climbing frames, which your animals are actually going to use. That is pretty cool. Now, this is interesting to note and keep that in mind because we are going to talk about this when I'm talking about my actual habitat in the end. Um, second thing we're going to talk about is basically what our keeper does over here. It is using the bridge, right? This is cool because actually none of our animals can use this bridge, but the keeper can. And this is very interesting because the animals seem to have a different navigation than our staff members. Because the animals, they, they do differ between traversable area and climbable area. I'm going to show you exactly how this uh, is transferred to the actual overview. Now you can see the blue area is navigatable area and the green area is climbable area. It doesn't count towards the traversable area. Some pieces in the game create traversable area. Some other pieces create navigatable area in terms of climbing. And there is a big difference. So you can change the way your animals move and behave by having a traversable area in between. Now, as I wanted to just show you, this piece over here looks weird, but in fact, this is the most overpowered item in the game. This is the East Asia water wheel plank. And please write that down, favorite in your menu or whatever. If you want to build anything that works, use these pieces because the animal, as you can see, can just do insanely crazy stuff. Okay, now with that out of the way, just to sum up, animals that don't have a climbing need will always favor the shortest route to get somewhere. Animals that do have a climbing need will favor a longer climbing frame over a shorter one to get to a certain location. Pretty easy, pretty simple. There seems to be not really a difference in these different shapes. So I couldn't find any particular thing that makes them use one more over the other. It's a little bit of an issue, but yeah. Now our tiger over here is demonstrating now exactly what we are going to talk about next. And this is how to make your animals move smoother. And this is um, the glitch over here. We know all, we all know this and it's gonna happen quite often. And there is a specific reason why this happens. And I'm gonna show you how you are going to improve this. Okay, so I changed this test a little bit. Uh, I put all the animals already to one side. And what we are going to do, we are going to delete some of these items over here just to show you something. So I'm going to delete this thing over here. I'm also going to delete these all over here because we don't want this. So we are going to move with those, okay? Um, so now I'm going to press, uh, press play and just wait until some of the animals start climbing. And then I'm going to explain how and uh, if you want to change it, how you do this and why you should do it accordingly. Um, I'm not going to bother you with all the investigation I did because that took ages. As you can see, our lemur friend over here is using this wonderful piece over here quite impressively and quite neat. And it seems our animals are not going to use it as of now, so I'm just going to speed up quickly um, to make sure that we see someone climbing. Okay, this dude is just not really sure what it's going to do. Okay, there you go. The lion jumps over and it's going to use this climbing frame. Let's see how it is using it and where stuff is happening. Okay, seems to be fine. Seems to be all fine. Well, let's see, it's gonna take that route 
And it's gonna take that root over here. It looks all fine, right? Doesn't it? Okay, it's a little bit of a glitch here, but not not something you should worry about. Okay, now how did I manage to do this? I changed this thing slightly, and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do and what is the biggest mistake you can do. Actually, this is still a bit wrong over here. Now. Let's investigate the pieces a little bit better, okay? So I'm going to make one thing now. I'm going to move this piece a little bit further ahead. I'm going to use this piece and move this a little bit further away. And now let's delete this one and kind of connect uh, these things again by doing this. And now just going to move that one over here. Awesome. All right, so I've done that for a specific reason. I'm going to delete all of the other frames now just to make sure that our, oh well, I'm gonna keep this one in for a specific reason and that one is not usable at all because I still kept that in for a specific reason. Okay, now I'm gonna press H and I'm gonna choose our lion over here. You can see these green lines, okay? You can see these green lines and you can see how these green lines are forming now. And one thing which is very interesting to note is now leaving some of these spaces open creates these triangles in here. You won't see these triangles on this frame. You also won't see these triangles too much on this frame. And you would think that this is a good thing. In fact, it's not. I figured that the animals seem to have some issues when it comes to moving pieces into each other. So exactly this one over here, and if we go very close to it, you can actually see the problem. It creates this, this, this and such a weird shape, okay? And this is the navigational area of your animal. So there is a multiple ways how the animal can move. And if you look closely at the beginning, you have seen some of the lions and tigers moving very weird over here. Uh, and in fact, it, it really didn't look nice. The smaller primates seem not to have that big of an issue because they move a bit quicker and then seem to be able to traverse further distances of these things. Now, in order to prevent this, I found out that it's always better to first of all, make sure that you never ever in your life have something sticking out like that. Just never do it, just never, okay? Just move it down so it is actually forming a nice little corner piece, okay? So this way you improve already quite a bit about the climbing, so quite dramatically, I should say. Also, make sure to never ever have this, because this is gonna create confusion across your animals. What you wanna do is you wanna move this all the way up, and then you also want to make sure that it is really, uh, the best thing would be not even touching at all. If you just slightly move that off, like this, and like that, and then just make sure that you delete this piece, and then we're gonna create another overpath on top of here, and also make sure that to, it's okay, you can sometimes just move it into each other, it's not dramatically, but it's, it's still okay. Now we need to wait until one of the animals is using the frame, but you will definitely see that there is an improvement. Now let's click on the tiger and see how the climbing sees, uh, is looking right now. And you can see that is a lot cleaner, okay? So you have these shapes now and they are a lot cleaner. And if this animal is very nice to us now, it will do the favor of climbing now and hopefully, not glitch too much because um, that would be awesome. Okay, so it's jumping on top of that now. And now uh, let's see what it's doing. Oh, look at that, it's climbing up here. And it's just taking that one very nice and smooth, right? That was not too bad. Now let's see how it's using to go down. Oh, that looks, that looks fair. That looks fancy, doesn't this? Oh my God, look at how this looks. And now let's jump down, awesome. This was the perfect example. You all have seen what happened before, right? So I'm very happy now that this, ha this, this works because I had so many issues doing this and filming this uh, prior to that. It was always something happening. But I think this is the perfect learning here. Now, I always did it wrong. I always did stuff like this. I always tried to make shapes that go very much into each other because I thought this is the best way to make it smooth. In fact, it's not. To make this thing workable over here, the only thing you need to do, uh, do is just delete some of the pieces because they are very much sticking into each other, as you can see. Uh, I'm just gonna use this. And what you do is just put them further away, okay? Make, make sure that they're not touching each other. Just make sure that there is a little bit of a, a gap in between. So there you go. This is all wonderful, okay? 
So there we go. And just let's let's delete these pieces down here as well. I just want to make sure that this works now. And you have seen the tiger in the background performing the climbing again without any issue. So you can see you can also repeat it. Um, one thing though to note, if you don't change the location, you can still drag it in. So if you want to make a longer piece, it's not creating any confusion. So I just changed this slightly. Let's hit H again. And you can see there is a wonderful new traversable area. Oh wait, no, there is none because I kind of messed up over here. Um, let's just do that again and maybe don't put them into each other just to make sure that this works. There you go. Just delete this piece again and just go all the way in here again. Okay, now it should definitely work. Let's have a look and press H. Yes, there you go. You have this navigatable area now and it's looking for all fine. All right, now let's have a look if the changes did actually work. Some of the animals are about to use it and you can see, look at that, the lemur is taking uh, this one absolutely perfectly fine. The red panda is doing the same. It's just moving very nicely across that one. Let's see what the macaque does. The macaque uses it absolutely perfectly fine and look, oh my God, this is just, this is just incredible, okay? So you can see this is how you improve the navigation of your animals dramatically. I, I could see there was a, an improvement of over 90%. Like, I had a lot of glitching before, but by just doing this, I improved the glitching by like 90%. It was really awesome. All right, and I've got one last lesson for you guys. And you see, I, I did a little change of this habitat, and you can see that I added a little stone traversable area over here and I'm gonna show you how this looks with the traversable area there you go we have this stone area over here and this is exactly what I meant a little bit earlier today this is creating actually traversable area and not climbable area and I'm gonna speed up the whole process here and I'm gonna mo move the animals all to in another area and then you guys gonna see what is happening um, most of the time so I, I didn't really find a rule about this but um, I can I can definitely tell you something which uh, was a bit of a it was a bit of a finding okay so here we go now the animals start to use the area this tiger is going to start to to go over here and yeah the red panda is climbing which is uh, quite obvious and now let's see what all the other animals do Okay, so we can see what the tiger is doing over here, uh, or maybe not, okay, so it's not doing the favorite this time. Usually this tiger was a very good example, maybe it's doing it now. Yeah, it's doing it, okay, it's doing it, okay, so now even better, we have some food actually to see. Okay, there you go, there is some more food, awesome, and there we go. Now, okay, to, to really make sure that we don't take this too long now, what I found out, and the tiger showed this to us already before the food was dropped down, because food is a bit of an unfair thing, okay, um, there is one thing which is important to note. Animals seem to, in general, always prioritize the traversable area quite a lot however they only do this when they don't have the prior uh, the, the prior one need so food and drink is always the shortest way possible however everything else is i always favor the normal as you can see look at that they just while i'm talking about this the animals are showing this to me like the lion and the tiger will always use this area to get to the other side like nine out of ten times they use this instead of this climbable bridge over here because they just see this one be much better and fun story the climbing animals obviously always use that bridge over here because it's for them fulfilling their need during traversing over the bridge. Now, this is very much summing it all up, okay? Well, I know we learned a lot and I know it was really hard to understand because there's so much in it. I really tried to do some overlays that make it easier to understand. Now, um, let's just stop over here and go back to my habitat to understand a few things. But before we go back to the habitat, I'm going to show you my Photoshop little um, thing I did. All right. You can see now over here that this is exactly my planning of the lemur, uh, sorry, the uh, capuchin monkey habitat. I'm going to show you the habitat afterwards again. You can see the example. Now we have the entrance down here. We have the staircase going up to the food source. And you can see on the other side of the bridge, there is the water source. And then what I did is I kind of put some different enrichment items all over the place. These are the green things over here. And I intentionally left some less interesting area in the middle which they cannot traverse. Now what this creates is a movement as you can see a circular movement in the habitat because 
They always move between here to fulfill their primary needs. As soon as it's done, let's say they have to drink and then there is some food. When they're done, they go either this way or either this way and start the movement. Because afterwards they go to the water, they go to the sprinkler, they go to the food, they go to the sprinkler, they go to the water, they go to the sprinkler and so on and so forth. I even put down some other enrichment items for them, uh, for those animals who favor different ones. They start moving in another circle. But this way you start to create some circles inside of your habitat and with these circles you are actually starting to have a big movement in your habitat which is super cool and you make the animals climb a lot now let's jump over back into the habitat to show you exactly what i mean Okay, we are in here and you can see now a lot better why things happen the way they do. Now let's have a look where our animals are. Look at this animal. This is just running around here, taking this route, jumping inside that area and just, um, yeah, looking at something, I don't know. But let's have a, have a look more into what is going on here. Someone is sleeping over here. Then we have some animals down here moving around. Uh, I think there's no one around the sprinkler as of now, but sometimes there are. There are more animals around here checking this area out. We have a lot of animals down in this area uh, being just happy ever after. I think there's also an enrichment item here, which is... Oh no, this is someone sleeping. That looked, that looked weird. Um, but yeah, you can see this area is kind of used quite a lot. And in general, the animals are just using the climbing quite often. As you can see, this one is just jumping over here. That one is just climbing up the stair and so on and so forth. It's really working absolutely well. And they are always favoring uh, to, to just climb and move a lot in this habitat. Sometimes I have to reset some of the animals because they get stuck somewhere. But this is, you know, this is kind of a trade off you can take. Some things though I didn't do like I, I did in my research, for example, the um, climbing over here is a bit of a finicky thing. You will see them uh, bug a few more times than it could be. But I just wanted to have these pillars stick out a little bit because the bridge otherwise would look totally ugly. And what you could do so, um, you could actually always use things that are um, not climbable and then this would also look good, okay? So you could actually use like a, a metal frame over here, like a metal pillar and then just put the ropes in between and the climbing would look absolutely perfect and smooth um, just because you don't have these pillars. But you can see really how they move across these things and it looks really awesome because for most spaces I try to follow the rules I kind of uh, set while doing my research. And uh, you can really see from, well, let me just go down here a little bit to show you a bit better, you can really see there's a lot of movement going on in this habitat. There's a lot of cool stuff happening and they're just using all the roots and yeah it's just really cool to see that this happens and in fact they also started to use these sleeping bulbs over here quite a lot um, when they were tired at the beginning now one thing I changed and this actually took this away from them I still need to connect these again um, because if there is a circular as I said in my planning there was a circle going on I, I deleted the circle by uh, taking away one of these things I still need to bring this in again and then they start using these sleeping areas again because one thing I didn't point out is that obviously when you put down sleeping spaces these areas will always be used for sleeping over normal areas if you don't have enough sleeping areas the animals will always sleep on the ground um, where they like it but uh, you can always improve the movement quite dramatically by giving them some sleeping spaces because they will use them now yeah that's basically it about today's uh, episode i just want to sum this up by uh, getting into this position over here and leaving the game running and you can see them moving because in fact that's what happened now to sum it all up this game is quite detailed and quite deep when it comes to traversing of animals now i really want to shorten this down now for those of you who skip through the video and want to have the full uh, narrowing down action going on you get it now so first rule is we have three different types of navigation in the game it is the terrain navigation it is the water navigation and it is the climbing navigation while the first two are pretty simply calculated by the available space on the ground and the surface the third one climbing is divided into two different um, areas so the first area of climbing is navigation for animals that don't have an enrichment by climbing they just can climb to get somewhere for those animals it's just a matter of getting somewhere taking a shortcut but it's not enriching them however 
on the other side and this is the second part of climbing for those animal animals who have a climbing need they will always favor climbing to get somewhere which is longer and more enriching than other climbing so to keep that in mind to make your animals climb more it's not only giving them the option to get somewhere while climbing but also to give them more climbing to get somewhere over less climbing okay now in order to get animals to climb that don't have a climbing need but still can climb make sure that you always have the shortest route possible provided by a climbing frame because that way they will use it they will never use it only for the sake of it they will only use it to get somewhere so make sure that you always pair it with different things okay that's part one part two we have different items in the game, different needs that the animals need to fulfill. There is a difference. We have a first layer and this is the basic needs and that is food and drink. This will always overpower everything else. As soon as there is food delivered to your habitat or the drinking bulb is filled, the animals will storm there. They will forget about all the other actions and they will storm there. In contrast to what people thought, you always want to make sure that you put drink and food source very close to each other because minimizing the distance between food and drink minimizes also the time needed to fulfill the basic needs. That means the quicker the basic needs are fulfilled, the more time is left to discover the enrichment items. Which brings me to the third point, enrichment items. Enrichment items are really important to make sure that your habitat is used to the max by your animals. However, Every single animal has a different um, kind of favorite. That means for primates and for smaller monkeys, you always want to use the sprinkler quite a lot because the sprinkler is super OP. You can have up to three sprinklers in your habitat before they really start to ignore them um, because the more, the more you have, the more they ignore it. I don't know exactly what it is, but this is what I found out. Take it for what you want, um, but I can only recommend to use Adamax three of those um, it's always better to use only two because even the third one is already getting a bit more finicky anyways then the next part what you really want to consider with your enrichment items make sure to put different types of enrichment items in a different location so that you create a certain circular round uh, different kind of circles okay so the idea is that you always want to have food drink enrichment item enrichment item food drink what happens is that most of the animals will start to use their own circles because not every animal in your habitat is liking the one enrichment item uh, the most they all have their own favorites to be used okay so that's about the enrichment items and the third layer of it is definitely sleeping and spaces to sleep because the animals are always using sleeping where there is a dedicated sleeping space put down so either the leaves or the kind of uh, sleeping bedding you have of the habitat menu and just make sure that you put this also in another location so you have three different available things to do Okay, now the last thing, and this is part four of the video, is how to make sure that the animation is more smooth about your climbing. So this is a bit more of a tricky thing to boil down, but in fact what I learned is that whenever you create climbing frames, make sure that the different climbable items are never ever intersecting. Better leave a little gap but never push them into each other. Because what happens is it creates a weird interference and it, it creates a weird triangular shape at the kind of point where they touch. And this creates this weird movement of the animals. So again, better leave a little gap. The animals will jump this gap or sometimes if the gap is small enough, they will just completely ignore it and go over it. But it definitely makes the animation a million times better. Yes, sometimes you will still have the glitching and especially this habitat over here doesn't take the rule well, too too serious um, because sometimes I just went over uh, over this um, and to prefer the looks of it but you can see from the movement over here that most of the parts it's it's really good and it's really decent now that said this is already it and I really hope that you guys found this video informative and helpful I do know that it's been a really long video with a lot of information maybe you have to watch it twice maybe you have to skip back but I will try my best to give you some timestamps down below in the description I will try my best to give you um, 
overlays that help to understand these things and I will help to make like a little guidance at the beginning of the episode. Um, I really hope that you appreciate that and I hope to see you in the next one. If you found this helpful, make sure to share it to people that might need this too. And also if you have some questions, some feedback or if you have found something that is interesting to note as well, make sure to drop it down in the comments below. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed it. And until then, have a great time guys and goodbye.